All right. First thing this morning, ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at solids. One of the best programs and a program you're going to be using that I've had downloaded onto our school computers is called SketchUp. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and bring up this, this program. This is a free program by Google. It's called SketchUp Make. It's been around for a number of years. I, start, I used, started using it when it first came out in high school. Okay, and what it is is it's a 3D environment, okay, uh, that you can use. So, for instance, I can move this guy around in three dimensions. I can rotate Okay, so I can get different perspectives. You're right, he's flat. He's just meant to move as we move so it gives the same perspective. All right, and things like that. Now let me show you kind of how this program works. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to select a tool that allows me to draw rectangles. So I just drew a rectangle right there. Now I have another tool you might that allows me to take that rectangle and make it three-dimensional instantaneously. <laughs> you can very, how many of you have ever been on Google Earth? How many of you have ever seen the 3D buildings that they have on Google Earth? This is the program they used to make it. Okay? So now I can rotate around this object like so. Can I move the guy? I can. Billy Bob Jr. And so now he's on the roof of the house. It's a box. Okay, but that's not all. Let's say I wanted to make a door. And now I can just take and I can either extend it out or in. So what you're saying is you can make this ginormous building and then you can like travel inside and make it. Yeah, okay. something like that. <laughs> now, let's say I wanted to make a, well, let's say I wanted to make an arc. Okay, and I wanted to, no, that's not the direction I wanted to go with it. Okay, there's an arc. So now let's say I want to take that arc and I want to extend it in or out. Okay, so now I have a circular overhang. Can I color it? I can, actually. I can add all kinds of colors. So let's say I want to add green. Oh, Mr. B, did you get my email? Oh, that's an ugly house. <laughs> now, actually, there is a particular reason that I'm doing this. Okay. It's the same thing. Like, ah, that's exactly it. The blues are facing out. That's one color. Red up top, green down the side. One of the things we're going to be looking at today is different views. So we can look at, um, let me pull up my tools here. Windows. Hang on. Where is it at? Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Any computer running an operating system except Chrome. Okay. What? Uh, Apple's fine. Well, I'm running it off an Apple right now, but just you know, you can. You know, yeah, you can. Yeah, that that was a really good one there. Um. Yes, Emma. Really Just do it on Adele. Computer. You, your computer doesn't want to be, I will say this, the, this program takes up um, a fair amount of memory. Oh. So, well, okay. Six months? I use Corel. That's hard to say. You'd have to look. Have you ever heard of this? Guys, here real, real quick. Okay, I just need to, I don't want to do sandbox. Yeah, like for instance, you can do different things with it. Um, I need a different. You realize that this is professional, not racist. 
if Grace made a program, it would be you can make a person dance and like jump off and like <laughs> we jump off the house. Do spin. Hey, I'm not exactly sure what you guys are getting at here. <laughs> this is how you add a location. Wow. So you can actually put this object on a certain spot on the earth. Do it, do it, do it, do it. No. Find my house. Okay, so let's look at, hey now, Shh. let's look at different views here, okay? So I want to go to face style. So let's go to wireframe. It's wireframe, kind of gives you a see-through. If I want to go to, um, if I want to go to uh, shaded, then there it is. Okay, I'm just creating different colors of the surfaces. If I want to go to... Shaded with textures, I could add different textures to it. So this is kind of a cool program in the sense that it gives us different perspectives. All right, I can do. Um, I want to add some things to the toolbar here. Textures, we can get to that in just a minute. Here's what I want. Yeah. All right, so. Here is just a side shot. Here's the top. How do I know it's the top? Because it's red. But what does it look like? A it just looks like a rectangle. But you got the blue red view. Okay, I do have, these are called the different axes. Okay, so they're actually called X, Y, and Z. Blue, red, and green. But yeah, it looks just like a rectangle. So could you look at a 3D object and it would appear 2D? Yeah, yeah it does in this particular case. Or what if I were to go to... This perspective. You can see it a little bit, but it almost just looks like you've drawn some lines on a flat surface, right? That dude's like, yep, I'm standing on your roof. If you want to make it go backwards. Look at that. What if it's a bat? I don't think that wall tornado thing. I agree with you. All right, the point I'm trying to make is this. Can a 2D object really be 3D? Yes. Okay. Can a 3D object look 2D? Yes. Yes. yes, it can. So it's not until you actually get perspective where you can see different sides that it all starts to come together. Okay. <laughs> can I take the man off? Yeah, he's gone. Put him back. We can All right. In the house and then we get hit by the Let's do this. Let's do something different. <laughs> hey, guys. Here, let's do something a little different here. I'm going to go ahead and add an arc. And I need to zoom out. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a circle. So, yes. Yeah, I want to be able to make a circle here. Hang on. Huh? No, I can't necessarily do it like that. I want to show you guys how to do something here. So, I'm, I got to get it in a different viewpoint. Point though first. Okay, I want to create a circle, and I'm going to show you another cool tool about the a cool tool with this program. Uh, I wanted to be able to create the circle on that plane right there. See how it's green? Yeah. Okay, just like that. Now I'm going to zoom way out. Like yeah. And I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to take this. Oh, I don't want to do that. And I want to, tools, wait for it. Oh, snap. Now, didn't work as well as I would have liked, but because that, that one's a little bit tricky <clears throat> because of that rectangle there. But yeah, I can create a tube, okay? So this is how they make like handles on cabinets and things like that, okay? So let's go back. I need to get rid of this rectangle because it's messing me up. 
This is a program they use to make 3D printing stuff. So if you were to make something in here and take it to the Allen County Library, the odds are they could 3D print it for you. Oh my gosh. So a mini car? If you go in on like one of their afternoons, it, oh, a 3D printer printer? Uh, a couple thousand dollars, sometimes more, depends on. There's one, there's one at Concordia in... Oh, well they tried to, um, they tried to print something and it took like two days. Yeah. All right. Now I've gotten rid of the box. Now we should be able to get a full. Go ahead. The box was there so I could get the right perspective. There it is. Can you like make it like? Go like Can I hollow it out? Well, technically it is hollow. If I delete the end, you'll see that it looks hollow on the inside. It's a two. Can the person climb through it? Well, this is not animation. This is just literally a two. Yep. Okay. So I wanted to show this to you this morning. I'm going to go ahead and... It's called SketchUp. I wanted to show that to you this morning. All right, so here we go. Let's go ahead and talk through solids today. This is lesson 8-1. Okay, and the topic of today's lesson is solids. Now, if you are not very artistic, drawing these might be a challenge. Okay? So I'm going to give you a couple of techniques, at least with some of the basics. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started this morning. Start by drawing a circle. Doesn't have to be perfect. No. Okay, next I want you to kind of make another circle, and they're overlapped kind of like that. Kind of like a Venn diagram on its side, sure. Now make sure you're doing this in pencil. So you can erase a little bit, yep. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to take and we are going to just draw a line that connects the sides like that. Now right now it doesn't look much like a 3D dimensional object. The part that gets tricky is the erasing part. You have to erase certain things so it looks like it has depth. Okay, so we want to erase And now it's a cylinder. And you should sometimes maybe even do a little shading just to kind of give it perspective. So something like that. This is a cylinder. I don't think that's called a cylinder. Is it spelled right? Yes, yeah. Okay. My confidence in my spelling is not very good. Now, here's the next thing. You can also add lines in this direction if you wanted to kind of make it look. That's fine, too. It's all about perspective, okay? We're looking at a cylinder. When you're looking at different objects like cylinders, prisms, pyramids, things like that, flat surfaces... <laughs> at the long ends are called bases. So this right here, this is called a base. Okay? And the other base is actually not visible in this particular picture. But the other base would be back behind here. 
Those are the bases of a cylinder. Okay. Now, if you wanted to draw a prism, uh, like a cube or a cube, we could say, then this is how you would do that. You would draw a square. That's not very good. Yeah, it's an okay square. And then you do the same thing we did with the circle. Now, if you're using graph paper, it makes it really easy with the rectangles and the squares. Because I have a four square thing here and a four square, and there's overlap of one. Just like with our cylinder, you connect the ends. But in this particular case, you've got to connect three of them. And you know what? I'll go back and do that in red so you can see it. One there, one there, and one there. Okay, so you're taking your two squares and you're connecting them with three red lines. The important part about making it look like a cube is that you make the first square and the second square almost identical. If the second square is larger or smaller, then you're going to have something that kind of looks like it's either getting bigger or shrinking. Okay. Now we go back to the erasing. But it looks more like a cube when erased. And then you shade a little bit. Ooh, the dotted lines are fine. That's a good idea. Mm-hmm. And notice that my lines all go different directions. That would be a problem. Actually. Mm, it's slanted. Okay, so there's my cube. Okay, let's do a rectangular prism now. This time I'm not going to use any sort of autocorrect. Yeah. Now, I can put this back as far as I want. So, for instance, I could put my rectangle there. It just makes my prism longer, okay? And so then I just have to draw longer lines to connect them. But this time I've got to draw four of them. And we are going to do the dotted line method this time. Sometimes when we're working with solids, we want to be able to see what they look like in three dimensions, not just all the visible surfaces. So Grace's idea was an excellent one. What we do is we make dotted lines. I do this with a technique of called subtraction, where I draw a solid line and then I erase parts of it to make it dotted. And now that is a rectangular prism in three dimensions. The dotted lines indicate that it's behind the scenes. All right, we can't see it. But we know it's there. So you draw two rectangles, you connect them with the lines to the corners, and then you make some of the lines solid and some not. Say what? The lesson with the other thing? Sketch up? No. Okay. Hopefully you've got the rectangular prism thing kind of down. <coughs> now we're going to do a pyramid.
Well, read the definition. Okay. Well, let's break down that definition then of a prism. I think that that's I think that's a good way to go. A prism is a solid with two parallel bases that are congruent polygons. The lateral faces are parallelograms. Okay, that makes sense. So let's start with, and you don't have to draw this one, by the way. I'm going to go ahead and do like a hexagon or a pentagon, okay? Me. It doesn't matter if it's regular or not, okay? I'm going to go ahead and draw this a little differently, though. Okay, that'll work. Now, I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to paste the other one up here, and I'm going to start connecting them. Right. Except I need to zoom in. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and make some dotted lines because this looks kind of messy. Ooh. Let me make. Huh? Here, let me just erase this one and do that way it'll look okay. That's supposed to be the big one. There it is. Okay? That is basically a pentagon type prism. Okay, now let's look at the definition that they were talking about here. A prism is a solid with two parallel bases. Well, the parallel bases are going to be, let me bring these lines back just briefly, the parallel bases are going to be these ones. Here's the base at the top, and here's the base at the bottom. Okay, they're parallel. They're two planes that are parallel just like the top and the bottom of a cube. And then they're talking about these lateral faces. Well, the lateral faces are the faces between the two ends, or the bases. So I'll, let me, I'll highlight the, the bases here, or the faces. Here's a face, okay, and it's a parallelogram. You kind of see that? You see that it's a parallelogram? Let me outline that for you very carefully. This is parallel to this. This is parallel to this. It's a parallelogram. Okay. Now, rectangles are a type of parallelogram. So this also, this rectangle on the very front, that is also a parallelogram. Okay. This right here. That's also a parallelogram. And then the side, and this is the tough one because it's <clears throat> so weird. It's so tiny. The side over here is also a parallelogram. So that's the side of the prism as well. Like so. So we have this prism, okay, here, with two parallel bases, like the top and the bottom of a cube, with vertical flat sides that we call lateral faces, shaped like parallelograms. You'd also see it on this rectangular prism. This right here is a parallelogram. And this right here is a parallelogram. Okay, and those are faces of a rectangular prism. Here's a parallelogram on our cube. And here's a parallelogram on our cube specialized parallelogram called a rhombus. Those are on a cube, which is a type of prism. The only thing that's different is a cylinder, because it doesn't have those flat edges and spaces. That's why it is a solid base, or a solid with two bases that are parallel, that are congruent. So that's a cylinder. 
and then it just has that curved surface that goes between them. Okay, so there's our different solids. Now, pyramids. Pyramids are kind of interesting. I love these. So why don't you draw one with me? Okay, to draw a pyramid, this one's a little tricky. I'm going to go ahead and draw a line. Like so. And I'm going to draw it so that it's kind of like a really skinny parallelogram. Okay? So I'm going to draw a line there, the line there, and then I'm going to connect them. And then what I do is I put a dot directly above the center of this, right about here, like so. Does anyone know what I put that dot there for? Mary? Very good. It's going to be the top of my pyramid. Now, what would you guys recommend I do at this point? i got to draw four lines. Emma? You draw a line from each corner. Oh, yeah. I draw a line from each corner going up to the point. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and take and I'm going to draw a line to the point there. Oh, look how straight that is. Man, phew. Dang, I got a really good straight technique here. I'm going to draw. Oh, look at that. Boy. Hey, look at that. Man, I am the best straight line drawer ever. Try it again. Here, let me just try that again for you one more time. Woo! Man. It's a straight line, man. All right. I have a pyramid. I love shading in the sides of pyramids. If I don't do if I don't do straight lines, or if I don't do dotted lines, you can do shading, and that helps. Okay. I don't think you can classify mine as a pyramid. There it is. All right, last but not least, we're going to draw a cone. You make an oval. Well, that would be really kind of nice, but no, not in this particular case. Because then it would just be a cylinder. Now, for a cone, you have a couple of options, but typically all we do is we just draw two straight lines from the very edges down like that and then I really do like to just erase a little bit of it so that it looks somewhat three-dimensional that's it cones are kind of tough um, because it's hard to kind of visualize the three dimensions because it's a curved surface sometimes I've seen this done where if they're gonna do any sort of shading they kind of shade oh, no, no, no. they kind of shade uh, shade in a kind of circular pattern like this Kind of give it that three-dimensional look. So it looks kind of like a party hat. <clears throat> you kind of follow the curve of the bottom uh, oval. Okay, my cone looks like a dunce cone. Yeah, that's kind of what it should look well, like. No, so. like a dunce cone. Okay. Put it that way. <clears throat> now, in a pyramid... We call the flat spot on the bottom the base. What do you erase in a pyramid? On a cone, we call that area on the bottom the base. Prisms have two bases that are parallel. And that would include this down here and this up here. What about the square? Because that has... The square yeah, is interesting. Base. Any two sides opposite each other would be bases. So it could be the left and right hand sides, the top and bottom, or the front and back. They have to be opposite. But you can't say that about the rectangle. You can't because the bases, well, you're right, Grace Pennekamp. You're right. You could have, let me just highlight this a little differently for you. You could have this as a base. 
and that as a base. And yeah, you could do top and bottom. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Obviously, you have a knack for this. Okay, so you have your different bases. No, today I just wanted to introduce you to SketchUp and to the different types of solids. Well, I haven't decided yet. Okay. Well, no, no, no. Mr. V is the best teacher ever. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, don't, don't, don't. Do you want, do you want some brownies? My mom brought in. Let's do this. Let's do this. I want you to, this weekend, do the following. Draw brand new. A cylinder. A triangular. Oh, a triangular prism. Yeah, triangle would be nice. Can you construct a triangle? I'm guessing a triangle is kind of easy. Can I use graph paper? Uh, yeah, I'd recommend graph paper actually. Mr. B, can we draw the next prism on our notes, but we can't use the same prism? Like, on this, can I just draw this one for the triangular prism? I want this done on a separate sheet of paper. Ah, uh, okay. You gotta draw a cylinder, a triangular prism, a trapezoidal prism, a triangular pyramid. So. And a... Pentagonal pyramid. We haven't drawn any of these but the cylinder. Can you mess around? So you've got to kind of figure this out. Pentagonal pyramid. What do you think that's oh, going to have? It's the, one, it's the one with the five sides. One top and bottom. Yes. No. Yes. Yes. Okay. A pentagonal pyramid. A pentagonal pyramid. Uh oh. Oh. I know the There's going to be a pyramid that has what as its base? A, a pentagon. A pentagon. A triangle. A triangular pyramid is a pyramid that has what as its base? A triangle. A trapezoidal prism is going to have two bases that are trapezoids. And a triangular prism is going to have two bases that are triangles. I want you to draw and shade in color. Okay, that's what I want you to do this weekend. I want you to draw five solids. Okay? And if you have to, watch this video again. Okay, so that you can kind of see how solids are drawn. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop our recording now.